Okay, on this project we're going to have a go at building the mini cannon and we'll put the little fixings in place and the 6mm BB as well. Make sure you have your technical drawings in front of you uh, for this one. Really important that you can refer to the design as we're going through rather than just uh, copying what I'm doing on the screen. It's much more helpful if you can understand how to interpret these drawings. So I'm going to start a new design and as before save as the very first thing. Brill. So I'm going to right click on my title bar over here and make a new component and double click that and we are going to start by making the side. You can see this little dot here means that my side is my active component, that's what I'm designing on, which is what we want. I'm going to click Create Sketch. Now normally we would build on this base plane, most of what we do takes place there, but for the side, because it is a vertical component, uh, it's more logical to build on one of these vertical planes. It doesn't matter if you build on there, um, it would just have to be rotated later, but we'll draw on this plane from the beginning. So I'm going to click that plane on the side. Right, I'm going to draw this as a series of lines. There's a couple of different ways you could do this, but I'm going to draw uh, the baseline first. Make sure you're at, at zero degrees and the length you can take from the top left drawing of the side is 40 millimeters. I'm then going to put in the two vertical uh, sections and you can see that on the lower right hand drawing that they are 7 millimeters high each. I'm just going to show you a, a little trick here. If, if I make that any length but uh, vertical the tick to finish that line. I'm going to start constraining these. I'm actually going to use the horizontal vertical uh, constraint and click that end of line and that one and it will ensure that they remain horizontal. So should I change this one they will move together. I'm then going to draw it doesn't really it doesn't give us the length of this line here so for now I'm just going to draw the shape roughly and randomly note they're all blue which means that everything can be changed and adjusted and every point can be moved around all this stuff down here is locked it's fixed at 40 mil wide and there are all, all these constraints in so that can't change but this top section can so I'm going to start to kind of lock this in I guess I'm going to press D for dimension and dimension this middle portion. And you can see in the top left diagram that that midsection is 10 millimeters wide. There's quite a few different ways I could constrain these side pieces. I could dimension from there to there. And again, in the top left, you can see that's 15 millimeters. I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. I want them to be the same the same length and the same angle so I'm going to use one of the constraints you really want to use the constraints as much as possible rather than uh, dimensions they're, um, they're a more versatile way of drawing so if it's a little takes a little getting used to but uh, definitely worth spending a bit of time trying to get your head around it I'm going to use the equal tool here that makes whatever two lines I click uh, the same length so one two it's then forced them, you can see this equal symbols appeared, it's forced those two to be the same length. It's still blue, I can still drag it and move it, but they are now fixed at that same length. I'm going to do the overall height as being 22 if I press D for dimension. It's also under the create at the bottom here, D. Uh, I'm going to click on the bottom line and the top line and we can see the overall height in the uh, the lower right drawing is 22 millimeters. And at this point, 
it's all black it can't be moved it's it's absolutely fixed and we achieve that without adding these dimensions in on the side it's always good practice to move your dimensions out of your drawing you want the kind of drawing space if you like to be uh, clear of clutter so we can see what's going on there right so we're going to put those three circles in now to help me do this I'm going to put in a construction line so I select the line tool and over on the right in my sketch palette which might be minimized sometimes it auto kind of shrinks if that's the case just press those two arrows bring it out construction line and I'm going to come across this top until I find that triangle that's my midpoint I'm going to click and then do the same on the bottom you hit that midpoint and I've got a line down the middle I'm going to draw a circle, the shortcut for that is C. Uh, I'd advise you get used to using the uh, the shortcuts if you can, it's just a much quicker way of working. So I've just pressed the C tool there. If you want to drop a tool, it's Escape C to bring it back. I've still got construction mode on. If I drew here, it's, it's a dotted line, it's in construction mode, that's not what I want. So I'm going to click construction here to, to take it out of that mode. It's now going to draw solid shapes. And anywhere on this line, I'm going to click and drag out. And looking at my diagram, I see that it wants to be a 5mm circle. Now, because that's drawn on the line, it has this constraint here. Uh, one of these coincident constraints that just snap it. It's kind of stuck, if you like, on that construction line. So that's, that's partly constrained. I will need to add a dimension. So I'm going to press the D key dimension from the circle to this bottom edge here and that distance is 16 millimeters I'm going to draw another circle so I'm going to press C again and draw somewhere in the bottom left corner 4 millimeter circle and somewhere on the right again a 4 millimeter circle so we need to constrain these now they are both six millimeters up from this bottom edge and six millimeters in from the side so you could just add four dimensions again you want to try and have as few dimensions as possible if you can constrain it with these uh, these tools up here uh, it's a much better way of working so I'm going to use this horizontal vertical constraint to ensure they both these circles stay horizontally aligned that tool is quite clever it will it will constrain either horizontally and vertically whichever is closest so if this tool if this circle were originally slightly higher it would snap it down to horizontal whereas if I'd drawn it sort of above this first one they would snap vertically aligned but as it happens there they're kind of horizontally aligned so that's now fixed they can still move left and right and they're kind of move in free space now I'm going to fully constrain this one on the left and I will be using dimensions for that so press D for dimension or again it's it's down here click once on the circle once on that left hand edge and that does need to be six so we'll keep it like that and then once on the circle once on the bottom and that's five I'm going to make that six and you should note the one on the right moves up as well Brill. so that circle is now black it can't be moved at all, I've just clicked it, I, I can't drag it around, that's locked in place. The one on the right is blue. It's constrained so it can't go up and down but it can still move left and right. We're going to use the symmetry tool here and that will force the left and the right to be kind of mirrored if you like along this, this line or be symmetrical along that center line you click symmetry if you're unsure how to use any of these tools if you just hover or just let go of the mouse for a second it'll bring up a little di uh, dialogue about what to use so I'm moving the mouse and it's not telling me anything as soon as I let go select sketch objects or change the constraint type so I'm going to select my two sketch objects the two things I wish to be symmetrical one two I then again let go of the mouse and it just says select the symmetry line and for this that is going to be my line of symmetry and note that that's now gone black, it's fully constrained. I'm going to press the escape tool. You can note on my cursor, just to the right of the cursor, is whatever tool I have selected. Be it a constraint or a drawing tool, there's a little symbol there. So I'm just going to press escape to drop that. This is fully constrained, everything's black, it's the right size, so we're ready to extrude. I'm going to right click and press pull. Click the object I wish to extrude. 
and it'll often keep you looking flat at it which is not I think the most helpful so we're going to roll round you can either use the view cube for this by clicking and dragging just kind of want to see that blue arrow which you can't see flat on personally uh, again a little shortcut if you hold the shift key and middle mouse it will roll round uh, so personally I find that much easier just a super quick recap for the the functions of the wheel of the mouse if you roll it it'll zoom in and out if you press it down it will drag left and right and if you hold the shift key and press it down it will rotate so we're going to extrude that out it doesn't actually say on the on the drawing here how thick that material is but it is a three millimeter thick piece of aluminium now as standard the material infusion is steel so we need to change that we're going to come up into modify physical material and you can see in this design so far it's just steel I'm going to come down to metal and the very first one is aluminium just generic aluminium we don't need the specific type uh, we'll just use aluminium that'll change the color slightly but more importantly the, the properties of that piece I'm going to close that down and that is the side finished if, uh, if your workplace looks like mine uh, just a complete blank sheet um, and you'd rather have the grid in place it's uh, at the bottom here you just click that button and lay out grid and it will bring the grid in for you you don't need it to draw but um, it's there for you right we are now going to move on and have a look at the lower spaces so I'm making a new component here I'm going to right click mini cannon the, the project title and new component I'm going to click once, twice, and call this lower. Uh, I'll call them spaces underscore lower. Again, note that this is now my active component. Everything else is greyed out, ghosted out. Um, so I'm working on this lower spacer. I'm going to create sketch. You could draw it on this side or this side. It doesn't really make any difference. I shall draw on this face here. So I'm going to click and we're going to start to draw. I'm going to draw my component where it's actually going to uh, live, if you like. I'm going to draw it in situ. I need a circle, so I'm going to press C. This is one of the real advantages of Fusion is it will, it will kind of reference the geometry that's already there so I can pick up the middle of that circle see that little circle icon uh, indicates I'm in the center of this circle here and they should all have that uh, icon so I'm going to click and drag out and the spacer is 6.3 millimeters in diameter I'm going to press C again and draw the inner bit which is 3.3 millimeters in diameter I'm now going to right click over in white space, try and get them away from the habit of clicking over the workpiece. It can sometimes select the object as it has here. And then if you press press pull, um, you've already selected something and you can get a bit kind of tied up. So I'm just going to cancel that and right click in white space, press pull. And just be a little bit careful if you select the outer um, you're also going to have to pick up this inner ring here. Just make sure you've got both pieces. Again, I'm going to hold the shift key and the middle mouse wheel, drag around some looking at it from an angle, and then pull out this component. And it is 14 millimeters long. You can see that in the bottom left. Press enter. Now the only thing that's missing from this, and it doesn't actually say it on the uh, on the technical drawing, but there is a screw thread to go through there. Now the hole through the middle is 3.3, that is the correct size hole to drill for an M4 thread. But there's a bit of a, a problem I suppose if I go create thread, go and create tab thread, and click in here, it makes the closest thread to the size hole you've got. So that hole is 3.3, so it, it's assumed I want an M3. Uh, I don't. I'm going to click here and change that to 4 millimeters, and it's changed it out for an M4 thread. Press OK. The only thing remaining now is to turn it into aluminium. I'm going to click modify physical material and drag out the aluminium onto the part. Close that down. 
and that's it done. If I just activate the whole model now, you can see I've got two bits uh, visible and active. I'm just going to press save at this point, good to save uh, periodically and it is good practice to name it uh, rather than just calling it user side. Uh, so I'm going to call it side and spacer complete. The reason it's handy to, to put an actual title in there is on more complicated projects you have the option uh, should you need to, to to load some of these previous saves. So I've saved, it's gone from version 1, it should then become version 2. There it is. Further down the line I, I can go back to these various versions and if they've got titles it just makes it easier to identify uh, what it is that uh, that we're opening. What I'm going to do now is actually start to um, put a couple of joints in place, start to fix stuff down. Uh, these components, although they look like they're together, and I guess they're technically touching, there's nothing holding them in place. They're, they're just sort of, they happened to have been built there in this 3D environment. And they're just floating around. I'm going to press undo here to go back to that original position. First thing is we're going to ground this side plate. We're going to lock that in 3D space by right clicking side and ground and you'll see a little pin icon appear. That is now fixed in 3D space. I can't click and drag it. I could still drag this little spacer but I can't drag the side around. I'm then going to go on the assemble tab and joint and you could press J, it doesn't really matter. And it's asking me to select two components going to rotate round again that's the shift middle mouse wheel zoom in one nice little feature about the zooming is it will zoom to wherever you point your mouse so if I point my mouse to the right I'll zoom in over there but actually I want to focus on this portion here so I put my cursor there and then zoom and I go right in now I want the middle of that uh, workpiece there that uh, the middle of that cylinder. It, it's not so difficult on this shape but on some objects it's quite hard to pick the piece that you want. I, I want the end of this workpiece, the very centre of that circle. Uh, if I happen to be looking at it this way, when I move my mouse to pick up that centre it disappears. A really nice little trick is if you move your cursor over a flat surface and hold the control key it'll stick to that surface and then you can move your mouse and pick up that center point. For this object it's actually not the end of the world really, it's not too difficult to do it from an angle. Um, but just as good practice I would always put your mouse over a, over the flat surface, hold the control key and then you can go and pick up that midpoint. Then I'm going to roll around and again hover over the flat surface, hold control and pick up that midpoint there. It's coming as a rigid element uh, joint which is correct, kind of locked, super glued if you like, uh, and that's what we want to so press OK. Well, so I've got two components. Uh, this one is locked in 3D space, it's been grounded, and this one is stuck to it. Now, there's no point drawing these again. You, you could, but uh, we've got them, we might as well copy them. The first thing I'm going to do is copy this spaces underscore lower. I'm going to right click the component on the left here and copy. Again, there's a few different ways to do this, but this method I, th I think is the most logical. I'm then going to right click on my project and I'm going to come down to paste and there's two options here. I'm going to show you both. Y you only need to use one. Um, I would advise you, you use paste, but I will show you both and then hopefully you'll understand the difference. It's pasted in exactly the same location, so it's kind of on top of the other one. Uh, use the arrow just to drag it away and you could put it exactly where it needs to go, it, it's 28 millimeters away. Um, personally I find it easier to assemble and to put the joints in place if, if the part is slightly further uh, removed. Let me just show you what the paste new does, again you don't have to do this. Uh, right click on mini cannon and paste new and drag it away. Uh, okay. So this one was pasted and this one was paste new. When you paste new, it becomes a completely new component, whereas pasting links to the original item. So this one and this one are identical, 
and will always be identical, whereas this one, although currently identical, is not affiliated or associated with this original component anymore. Let me kind of show you what I mean by that. If I activate just that original lower spacer, and I come in and I right click the extrusion and edit feature and let's say for whatever reason I'm gonna make this 41 mil long when I come back and activate the mini cannon you'll note that the one I had pasted has copied the original whereas the paste new has not uh, there are certain times when you'd want to use paste and other times when you when you want to use paste new and at least now you know uh, what each one does anyway I'm gonna go back 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 just until that one has disappeared so now I've only got two spaces um, and this is the the pasted one of the original I'm gonna press J to start a joint uh, rotate round pick up the middle of that circle again hover over the flat face hold control click the middle I'm gonna roll around make sure I'm on the right side hover over the flat face hold the control key and pick the middle of that circle and again a rigid joint is what we want well, they're both now locked, as is the uh, the original side. I'm going to right-click, copy the side, and under Mini Cannon, right-click, paste. And again, it's pasted in exactly the same position as the original one was built in, which is helpful sometimes, but we usually want it moved away. Uh, and again, I tend to move at a reasonable distance. and just helps us to kind of get inside and see the uh, the faces to put the joints in. I'm going to press J here. It doesn't matter whether you lock the left or the right one, uh, the result will be the same. I'm going to use the right one. Hover over the flat surface, hold control, pick the middle of the circle, flat surface, control, middle of the circle, it'll bring it in and it'll lock it down. Because that's a rigid joint, uh, this whole piece is now kind of locked and because it's identical to the first one, everything lines up perfectly. Okay, I'm actually going to turn joints off, or at least I'm going to turn off their visibility, just the little icons here, they're kind of getting in the way a little bit. So the little eye symbol over here, I'm going to click that just to turn them off. The joints are still there, they're still active, I can't move anything, uh, just the symbols uh, disappear. You don't have to do that, but it tidies it up a little bit. Right, the barrel pivot. This is possibly the most complicated part of the whole uh, process. I'm going to right click on a mini cannon and make a new component. Click once, twice, and call it barrel underscore pivot. Now, usually we would draw components in situ kind of where they're where they're going to end up being for this one there's no real benefit to that because it, it kind of protrudes out both sides it it actually gets kind of difficult to, to do so I'm going to start a new sketch just on the base plane I'm going to draw it to the side of the um, of the mini cannon it doesn't really matter where I'd often draw kind of along this baseline it, it can make alignment a bit easier but it, it doesn't matter I've actually clicked off slightly there so that's fine I'll draw it there it doesn't I say it doesn't matter the uh, the sizes we need then so we'll start at the bottom um, looking at the uh, the barrel pivot drawing in front of me uh, and looking at the middle uh, drawing that shows the diameters and I can see the bottom section is 4.5 millimeters in diameter then going to right click, press pull that, and click and rotate round. And if you look up at the top drawing with all the uh, all the dimensions on there, I'm going to go 10 millimeters up. So I'm going to go kind of through that chamfer, if you like. Uh, 10 millimeters. And then going to draw a circle on the top of this. You could click create sketch, click on the top of that and then press C for circle. There's a nice shortcut that if you just press C it starts the circle tool and if I click on there it will start a sketch and start the circle tool at the same time. So that's a bit of a shortcut for you. 
click in the middle of the circle again make sure that the um, there you go. make sure you get that circle icon and drag out 5.5 millimeters right click press pull and I'm going to extrude both parts of that not just the outer ring but the inner as well three millimeters I'm going to click C once more and draw another circle. This is going to be the very middle portion of the pivot. Drag out. You need to be a little bit careful here. The dimension for this one is actually slightly less than the outers. Uh, if you look at the middle drawing, the dimension is at the bottom. It's four millimeters. And I'm going to right click, press pull that mid portion. Uh, and this is where you need to do a, a little bit of maths uh, just looking at the drawing uh, I'm going to extrude from uh, that last uh, cylinder which was 13 millimeters in from the edge and I want to go all the way over to the far side um, at the sort of start of the second larger cylinder at 21 millimeters, uh, a little bit hard to uh, to read and interpret. Might help to to draw on these diagrams. Feel free to do that if you want. But this extrusion is eight millimeters. I'm going to press C for circle. Click once more on there. Start in the middle. Come out 5.5. Right click. Press pull the inner and the outer, uh, make that three millimeters. And lastly, C on the middle of that circle. Just careful you do snap to the middle, there it is. Uh, 4.5, right click, press pull, and mm, select that circle, and that is gonna come up the last 10 mil. A little bit hard to work out those dimensions. Um, if you didn't quite follow where I got those numbers from, I'd advise you to kind of pause the video and just take a minute to try and pick apart uh, these technical drawings. They are intentionally a little bit difficult. It might be the kind of thing that comes up in an exam, so take a minute uh, and see if you can just work out where I got all those diameters and those lengths. Right, there's some chamfers to be added. So I'm going to come in, modify chamfer. We'll do the top and bottom edges first. So I'm going to click the lower edge and the upper edge. And if we look either at the, the left hand or, or the top middle drawing, we can see that it's a 0 0.5 millimeter chamfer. It's fairly straightforward. We're going to, we could either click modify chamfer or a, a nice little shortcut. If you right click, the top command is always the last one you chose, the last one I did was a chamfer and I, I need another so it's there for me as a nice shortcut. I'm going to click this inner edge and I'm also going to roll around and pick its kind of lower counterpart. Now I need to be a little bit careful here if we look up at the top middle drawing uh, you can see that that chamfer is one millimeter. It goes one millimeter along the length of the uh, the component. But as I drag this out, I can only get to half a mil. If I go any more, it it errors. It's, uh, I can't add chamfer into material that that isn't there. We're going to have to change this from an equal to a two distance. It's going to come out the half a mil to the edge, but it's going to come down one millimeter. And that will happen the same. On, on the upper and lower. It sort of copies each other. So that's going down one mil and out half a mil. And one more on this inner, these two inner edges. One, two. So again, looking up at the top middle drawing, you can see that uh, the edge of this larger cylinder is 13 millimeters from the start point and the end of the chamfer is 15 so we know we need to come down two millimeters there you go, two mil down over here 
and all the way out to the outside edge, which is 0 0.75 millimeters. So these two down two and out 0.75. Okay. All right, and that is the uh, barrel pivot complete. Now that component is actually made of steel. If you right click on the left barrel pivot properties, the standard material that Fusion makes everything in is steel. So we don't need to, to change it. The others had to be changed to aluminium, but as, as a standard, uh, all parts are steel. I'm going to press OK. And another good opportunity to save. Uh, pivot complete, although it's not quite missing out one thing. We need to add some threads. I'm going to go create threads. Now th these two components will be going through those holes there. They were five millimeters. Um, we need to be a little bit careful because the the diameter of this part is 4.5 mil, so it's going to try and make it as a 4.5 millimeter uh, thread, which, which isn't correct. Uh, we're going to change that to 5 mil and press OK. Okay, and with that thread added, that component is now done. I'm just going to activate the entire model. You can see the color difference between the steel and the aluminium. Right, well let's make a joint here or there or you can press J. It's a bit of a funny that one this one because it, it kind of sticks out the edge of the piece. So what we're going to do is pick the middle of the uh, the pivot. It doesn't really matter which side you choose. Uh, pick the end of that hole. So again hover over the flat surface, hold control, select that point if it does that, what you need to do is press flip and it will flip it around and it's kind of made that flush with the end which isn't what we want but it's not the end of the world. Fusion's quite clever in that it will align as it has here but it can also allow an offset so at the minute that's going to fix this end point two millimeters away from that face. Now if we look carefully at this. We want this centered between this plate and this plate here. If I move this to the left, there, centered. If I go six millimeters, it's too far to the right. Eight millimeters, too far to the left. Seven mil, spot on. And that should now be locked in place. Again, I can't click and drag that at all. Okay. Last component is the barrel, so I'll get the barrel drawing and I'll right click on the title block, make a new component called barrel. And again this one's quite a tricky one to build in situ, uh, so we're going to build it off the model and then add it in later. So I'm going to create a sketch on, uh, on this base plane. Again, it doesn't really matter which plane you use, but uh, often build on the base plane for sort of simplicity's sake. I'm just going to build in free space. Again, it doesn't really matter where. I'm going to start with the bottom of the barrel. It is 16 millimeters in diameter. If for whatever reason you'd drawn that circle or any of the previous components and you hadn't added the dimension when you were drawing, you can add it later just by pressing D, click the shape, circle in this case, uh, click once more and type in what you want and press enter. I'm then going to right click and press pull, choose that object and looking at the uh, left bottom left drawing we can see we need to go up 6 millimeters. I'm then going to press C and select that top face. Make sure you pick up the middle of the circle. It's there. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. I'm just going to 
draw it intentionally off center here and make it 14 millimeters and press enter you can later after the circle is drawn drag it around you might be able to get it on the middle it, it would probably snap to it but the best way it is to use one of these constraints and it's the concentric one uh, circles inside one another and you simply click one circle the other circle you wish it to be concentric with and they'll get snapped together I'm going to right click press pull and pull this up now the entire barrel is 36 millimeters tall we've already come up six uh, so obviously there's 30 millimeters left you could just type 30 I want to show you a nice little uh, tool built into fusion obviously we don't really need to use a calculator for 36 subtract 6 but fusion has a calculator built in so 36 and then minus key 6 and that will take us to it absolutely the right height so the total height subtract what we've already put in again obviously don't really need it for this but it might be helpful for uh, your own project or something in the future so that's the basic shape of the barrel I'm now going to put the holes through the middle so I'm going to press C and draw on that base Again, try and get it to snap to the middle when you see that circle uh, you know it's in the middle and it should put a center constraint on uh, uh, sorry a concentric constraint you can see there it's, it's popped up it's seen that you drew in the middle of this circle here and it's added in that uh, constraint for you right click press pull pick up that circle and drag into the uh, the middle now if we look at the bottom right diagram we can see that well, you can have to look at both the bottom left shows us that this 6.2 mil circle extends to the middle of the um, the circle that goes through the side of the barrel and we can see from the drawing on the right that that circle is 24 mil up uh, so we'll come in 24 and just note because we're going into the material it, it, it's a minus uh, so just be a little bit careful if you just type 24 it would it would come out the other side okay I'm going to do the other circle on the top which is 4.2 and right click press pull click that circle and drag it down and in now it doesn't really matter here you could just drag it through and guarantee that it cuts all the way but there's a, a nice little technique uh, that I'll show you so obviously I'm quite a way off where I need to be it's somewhere it's, it's about there um, if you wish it to if you wish something to be extruded to a certain point or a certain face if you click that face so I want it to be extruded to the bottom of this cylinder snap to that point there it will go down to that face whichever you've clicked had I clicked here it would go all the way down uh, but I, I don't really need it to do that I need it to go to that face there unfortunately it's actually now selected both the outer and the inner circle I don't know why but we'll deselect that and we're good to go double check that should go all the way through not quite sure what happened with that extrusion let's try that again I'm going to right click the extrusion here edit feature and just select that bottom there we go that's now gone the 12 mil we need to lovely right we're going to have a go at putting the hole through the side now this is a little bit complicated for a number of reasons um, you can't add a sketch to a curved surface uh, so what we're going to do is construct a plane on the edge of this so it's there isn't a plane uh, near it the, the three standard planes are not touching this uh, side of this so they're not the easiest to use in fact just going to turn off. I can't. It's like I turn the origin off. Anyway, 
not to worry. We're going to go into the Construct tab, Tangent Plane, and click anywhere on that curved surface, and it will put you in uh, a plane that's just touching that edge. I'm going to press OK. We then need a second plane, although you could draw on that one, it would work. If we do an offset plane and then drag it into this piece, now that top portion of the barrel, or the uppermost as we're looking at it, is 14 mil diameter. If I go in 7, I know that that plane is absolutely spot on in the middle. I don't really need to do this. You could you could draw it on this first plane, the tangent plane, uh, and it would be absolutely satisfactory, but I'm going to show you a, a couple more little techniques here. We're then going to start a sketch on this plane, that one that's running through the center, and we're going to slice. So that will cut away everything in front of the sketch plane. I'm going to slice it our work through, which is quite helpful. I'm also just going to turn off all this stuff behind it. I don't need it at all, so I'm going to make those components invisible. So I'm just looking at uh, the barrel. In fact, if I expand the barrel, the construction tab has the two planes I've, I've made. The one that's turned off is the one I'm currently sketching on, but this first one I can also turn off. Uh, neatens up the work a little bit. I'm going to press look at here to look flat on at, uh, at what I'm sketching and now I'm ready to draw. The first thing I'm going to do is project the, that entire uh, body, so I'm going to select bodies, click it and press OK and that's just projected those edges onto my sketch. Again look at will make you look flat at the workpiece. I'm now going to give myself a construction line, a line that runs right down the middle. Uh, if you press construction, that line will be a dotted line and won't uh, affect the drawing when I come to do the extrusion. It's a nice little tool there. I now need to draw the circle. It stays in construction mode, uh, so I shall need to turn that off before I draw my circle. I'm going to make sure it's somewhere on this line. It doesn't really matter where. Eventually it'll end up at this point, and you could draw it there, but I should draw it slightly lower, 5.7, and then dimension it. I've pressed the D key, you can see my dimension tool is uh, is selected. Click this circle, click this bottom edge, drag out, and it wants to be 24 millimeters up. It's all black, so we know uh, it's fully constrained. I can right click, press pull. Click the circle, and now I'm ready to extrude. And I'm actually going to cut that way. And rather than going out one side, I could do two sides, which would allow me to uh, to drag both ways. But it's a symmetrical piece. I might as well use symmetry. Uh, and then obviously, whatever I cut out in the front, it also cuts out the back. Press OK, and that is done. Hopefully just the chamfers and fillets to add. Uh, chamfer first on this bottom edge. If we look at the left drawing it's fairly simple, it's just a 0 0.5 mil chamfer. Select the edge. I'm still on two distances from the previous work we did, uh, so I'm going to change that to equal distance and make that distance 0 0.5 millimeters. I'm then going to right click, repeat chamfer on the top edge here and that is a one millimeter chamfer. Last thing to do is the fillet on this top edge here. Again that component is 14 millimeters in diameter uh, so we know it needs to go in seven. If it were an obscure diameter uh, and you didn't have a calculator you could use the built-in calculator. The overall diameter is 14 slash 2, we'll halve that. Obviously, hopefully, we won't need a calculator to halve 14, but if it was an obscure diameter, uh, the calculators are a really useful little feature built into Fusion. Now, we do need to add a thread, create thread. 
in this back portion. 4.2 millimeters is the hole you would dr drill for a 5 mil drill bit. Fusion jumps to the nearest size, which is 4. Uh, we want to make that 5 millimeter diameter and press OK. And the only other thing to do is change the material, so modify physical material uh, and drag out aluminium, close, and then I'm going to turn, well, I'm going to activate the whole model. I will still only see what I've kind of turned on so that the barrel here is visible, the little eye symbol tells me that. I then just make everything else visible. So everything else is locked down, the barrel is free to move. To lock this onto this pivot is a little bit tricky. Uh, watch what I do here. I'm going to start a joint and I'm going to pick the inner curved surface, this cylinder that runs all the way through that hole. And I'm going to hold the control key and there are three points. One, two, three. The ones on the outer edge, it's a little hard to show, but the ones on the outer edge are actually right on the edge of the uh, the barrel. We're going to use the one in the middle. I want this component to be centered on this pivot. So I hover over the mid portion of the pivot, hold control, and again you can see one, two, three points, the far left, the far right, and the middle. If I click the middle, it will jump in. Uh, you can see it was playing the animation for rigid. It's a locked joint. It's not what we want. We're going to make this into a revolute, and it should pivot on that point. Press OK. And that will now spin fairly freely around that area there. I'm just going to save once more. Okay, I'm going to add in the uh, BB pellet now. So I'm going to right click new component, 6mm BB. And this is one of the rare times when the create sphere is useful. I would generally avoid using these really at all costs. The, there's a use for the coil every now and again. But uh, the box cylinder sphere torus, I, I would avoid, aside from in this uh, this time when we specifically want a sphere. I'm going to capture position and draw on the base plane. Again, doesn't really matter. Click, and it's actually set it to 6mm. Uh, it might come through as 4 or 5 millimeters for you, but change that out for 6 Now that material is steel, unfortunately you change physical material uh, I believe they are made of ABS uh, if we go into plastic ABS only comes through as white and black and we really want yellow so we're going to cheat a little bit uh, and rather than modify physical material we're just going to do appearance appearance is like putting paint over the top of whatever you've got in front of you so this will still be steel physically, but we can paint it to look like something else. You've got to be a little bit careful with uh, with this, because ideally you would change the physical material, but so I could make it look like bamboo or oak, but it would behave as if it was steel, so just the appearance is only really good for this kind of painting application. Um, again, under plastics there aren't really yellow plastics, but under paint glossy uh, there is a yellow so that's where we'll go paint glossy yellow and close and then activate the entire model and this joint again a little bit tricky uh, you want to pick up the middle of the cylinder on that my cursor is kind of on the the center of the barrel and I'm going to hold control and pick the end of the barrel but rather than a revolute, which is revolving, so that's, that could revolve on the end, uh, I want a slider. You can see it's kind of sliding in and out there. Press OK, and it should, hopefully, both slide in and out. And as I move the ball bearing up and down, it, uh, it affects the angle of the barrel. 
Brilliant. I'm going to save once more. And that's the model just about done. Uh, you could stop there if you wanted. Uh, I'm going to show you how to add the nuts and bolts just to get the kind of absolutely complete cannon looking a little bit more like this one. This is kind of an optional extra. We're going to go into the insert tab to find the nuts and bolts. You don't need to make them. Uh, Fusion has teamed up with a company called McMastercar and they have provided technical drawings and 3D models for just about every nut and bolt you could possibly need. Uh, so we're in uh, we're looking, looking for nuts first and we want a hex nut. Hex nut, I mean you could really pick any of these, it doesn't matter too much. It's just for the look, the aesthetic. Uh, so if you wanted a cap nut, you know, have at it. But hex nut, inch or metric, we are using metric. We then, we could either search M5 or scroll down, uh, M5 is there. You could choose your material, this will change the, the physical material of the part we import. So you could have aluminium, brass, plastic. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the standard one over here. Uh, just the first one that comes up doesn't really matter. The bit you're looking for is this product code. So that's McMastercar's code for a metric medium strength hex steel uh, hex nut. You click that product detail, and this is the technical drawing they've uh, they've produced of the part. Uh, and keep going down to this little bit here. It will, as standard, I think, come through as a SolidWorks file, maybe. Uh, you need to change it to step. We use 3D uh, step files. Press save. It'll take a second, and it will then import that component into your model. I'm just going to press OK. Now, it's good practice, really, to change that number, that doesn't really mean anything that's for mastercar reference i'm going to click once twice and rename it m5 nut or if you like m5 hex nut and we're now going to put a joint between that and this workpiece here so j capture position uh yes i'm going to roll around pick the underside of the nut so on the flat surface it's like the middle and I'm actually going to join it against this flat surface here. You could do it against the end and then slide it back manually, but that is the point that we want, so I might as well use the flat surface. Uh, so it's coming in as a slider, which is not what we want. We want it as a rigid. So lock down there. And I want another one, so I'm going to right click, copy, right click on the title, uh, paste or paste new. I'm just going to paste. Now it's going to paste it in exactly the same position. I'm going to drag it through and out the other side. And then it's it's good practice to try and get it in the orientation that you want it to be in. So I'm going to twist it 180 degrees. Uh, so it's roughly kind of lined up. And press OK. I'm going to press J. And that flat surface there. Sorry, just to show you the flat surface on the back of the nut, hold control, pick that midpoint, and it's going on this flat surface here to there. It'll come in and make a rigid connection. Brilliant. Four more to do, these little uh, bolts here. I'm going to measure. Uh, you can see that that is a four millimeter diameter, so we want an M4 uh, fastening. I'm then going to measure from this edge here all the way across to the other side. Ooh. So I'm going to restart that selection from this face to this face. And you can see that it is 20 millimeters all the way across from one side to the other. So the length of the bolt, ideally I suppose it would be 10. There's always a danger that if you get a little bit of dirt in there and the, the bolts touch in the middle, they might not fully seat. So I'm going to go for like an 8 maybe a nine millimeter bolt. Okay, back into McMastercar, insert McMastercar component. This can be a little bit buggy sometimes, a bit glitchy. You might need to close it down and, and open it back up. Screws and bolts, uh, take your pick. 
it doesn't really matter so long as it's got a proper screw thread I'd avoid the um, the countersunk bolts socket head, round head, hex head doesn't really matter I'll have a socket head metric M4 uh, huge material the length will have an 8mm and there's all sorts of variants head profiles and all sorts of it just the standard one will be absolutely fine to move across this page I'm holding the middle mouse wheel down it's not the easiest to navigate but there is the product code open it product detail come down to the window here again make sure it's 3d step press save it'll kind of download it onto your drawing first thing I would do is change that M4 by 8 uh, socket head bolt just makes it much easier to identify. Oh, oops, didn't like that. Try that again. M4 by 8 socket head bolt. J for joint. And it's this inner flat surface that I want to get stuck against the side of the workpiece. So I hover over that, hold control, pick the midpoint, hover over the flat surface, hold control, and pick the midpoint there and it will get locked in place. Brilliant. Just a kind of a word of warning, I suppose. These components from McMaster car are very detailed. If I just isolate it, you'll see they're kind of perfect replicas of bolts. They've modeled the threads. There's a lot of detail in there. Uh, and it can actually strain the computer to, um, to model them all. So if your computer starts to get a bit glitchy or, or slow down, it's probably not worth uh, going much further. The more bolts you add, the more strain it puts on the computer, and, and you can you can crash it pretty easily. So if you find you're starting to glitch and, and, and you know it's getting a bit buggy, I'd advise you just stop and, and finish the model without the bolts. Anyway, I'm going to activate the whole model again. Uh, right click the bolt uh, in the window on the left, copy up here paste paste new doesn't really matter I drag it uh, it's 28 millimeters but again I, I tend to move it past where it needs to be it makes it easier to put the joints in press J the middle of that uh, the head of the bolt and the midpoint there press OK right click paste again drag it all the way through and again I'd kind of rotate it round just so it's pointing in the right direction you don't have to you don't have to get it spot on if I if I kind of make it I don't know 170 165 it's smart enough to kind of work it out but if it's 180 degrees around the wrong way uh, it will often be uh, brought in the wrong way as well you can flip it but it's easy to do it when you're moving it J for joint and it's the flat face hold control pick the middle of the bolt flat face, hold control, middle of the hole, bring them together and one more time, right click, paste uh, this time we're dragging it all the way through and across I shan't rotate this, I'll just kind of show you I guess what, what happens and how to overcome it um, if I press J, pick the middle of the bolt and the middle of that hole and it has actually brought it through, of course it has uh, I was expecting it to come through looking like that uh, if that was the case you just press the flip button and it will um, it will kind of correct that if you press J and it brings you up the option of uh, capture position or continue it just press capture position each time uh, and there we go that is our little cannon with the joints as needed uh, yeah all done. Should have the thread in the back there, the threads through the uh, through the components, and it's uh, it's finished. One little thing you could do, uh, entirely optional, and this is just good technique really. We've got six fasteners here. In in some models, you might have 30, 40, 100, a thousand. I'm going to right click and make a new component. I'm going to call that component fasteners 
and then simply select all of them by holding the control, uh, not the control, sorry, the shift key, and just drag them into that fasteners folder. Uh, it doesn't change the model at all. Everything remains the same. All the joints are there. It's exactly as it was. It's just neater. And if I wanted, I can turn all of the fasteners on and off together. If I want to turn one on and off individually, uh, I have them kind of in here and I can uh, turn them on and off as I need. It's just sort of good etiquette, good kind of technique. Uh, but again, not, not essential. Uh, and there you go. That is how to make the mini cannon.